them off a little bit cheaper. You're going to get him. You can bury him as like your third wide receiver, but I, I don't mind that pick at all. And I think he's going to have a nice season, so he's a he's a potential waiver wire pickup. I don't think he was drafted in too many leagues. But that's I, I like that's him. interesting. Yeah, think about it. Just a little thought that's uh, running through this medium-sized brain sitting on top of my I like I like the Tennessee Titans at home in a, in a one, getting getting a point or one or pick them. With, this game's practically an even spread, but I like the Tennessee Titans at home against the Minnesota Vikings. I think, that, I, think I saw Sh- Sean Hill is starting for the Vikings, I think I saw. He is, and I'm um, glad you brought this one up. Uh, it's, it's that old home dog. I saw it at two and a half as of this morning. Uh, Tennessee getting two and a half at home. I think Marcus Mariota is another one who breaks out this year and shows you what he's got. Uh, overwhelming athleticism. Uh, they didn't do a whole lot to help him with targets there. Delaney Walker is going to get seven to ten looks a game. I believe that he does, and he tends to haul in more than half of those. Uh, but Ty J. Sharp is another wide receiver there who had a really nice preseason. Everybody seems to uh, to really have their eye on him in Tennessee. And he's another guy in daily fantasy who's like, Three thousand dollars. You can grab him dirt cheap. You can get away with some really inexpensive, probably underrated wide receivers this weekend that can get you high in some tournaments. Um, but I agree with you. That's the one game that I do think. I think Tennessee can could win that one outright. I, I think Sean. Yeah, Hill's, I think Minnesota is going to realize that they're going to have to associate, incorporate, I should say, Sam Bradford in this offense very quick because they're going to find they're going to, they're going to find out why the Detroit Lions were so bad for so many years and Sean Hill was a big part of that. <laughs> yeah, he's just a very average quarterback. He he's a mediocre guy. Look, he won a couple That's games. That's nice you to call him that. That's nice you to call him average. Um, yeah, probably he's is. Never, he's, he's a backup. Yeah. He's an Yeah, I mean, he's never back. he's never thrown for more than 400 yards in a single season, so kind of yeah. I'm sure he loves you. I'm sure if he's listening out there, he'd like to go give you a big hug for calling him average. All right, he called um, the average. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a compliment for Sean Hill. Um, yeah, coming to me, it doesn't mean much, but yeah, probably so. I, I do think that in that game in particular, though, you, you're going to see a nice day out of Delaney Walker, and maybe this, I, I'm anxious to see Ty J. Sharp break open. Uh, Minnesota's got a very good run defense, but let's see what the two-headed monster in Tennessee looks like with uh, uh, Derrick Henry and Demarco Murray. Demarco Murray is a must-start for me tomorrow. Uh, Minnesota does – their saving grace could be the Minnesota does actually have a very good defense. They but, do. But um, yeah. I like Tennessee to pull this game out. I don't think they're going to get any offensive production out of out of Sean Hill. I don't like their wide receivers. I mean, I don't know what this Laquan Treadwell – I've seen him play in college. I mean, he looks, he was a fine receiver at Ole Miss, but who knows what he's going to do at this level. I've seen, you know, he's, he's buried on a depth chart tomorrow. Yeah, he probably won't see much of the field. And then there's there's Stephon Diggs out there who had a nice hit a nice year all things considering okay. last year but yeah. I don't know I mean just none there's nobody but Adrian Peterson that I look at on that offense like okay this guy this you know this guy impresses me and no, it's just gonna, I, I feel bad for Adrian Peterson it just might just come down he's got to carry too much weight on his shoulders. I agree, he does, um, and that's why if you are in desperate need, you shouldn't be in desperate need of a running back week one. But Jarek McKinnon out there is probably going to see some additional touches. Uh, I would bench all the Minnesota wide receivers tomorrow. There's no sense in, 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 in unless you if you have to, then you drafted so piss poor. Then none of the it doesn't matter who you listen to. You're not going to get any better. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't mind Jerry McKinnon either. But I'm I'm with you. I would take Tennessee in the two and a half on that one. Um, I I do want to jump to another game, another divisional uh, battle matchup. Don't want to spend too much time on it. But it's San Diego traveling to the Big Red Ketchup House in Kansas City. Uh, I saw that one. Better. Yeah, I get it's six and a half, possibly seven in some places. I've got Rivers on a big sit em list, and that always scares me when you you look at one of these good quarterbacks like Philip Rivers and you think he's got to sit all day. You couldn't start him in fantasy. If you can't start the quarterback in fantasy, you cannot bet this team. No, I I love I actually love Kansas. That was one of the games I liked. I love I love Kansas City minus seven at home. I I, I like I think Kansas City is one of the better teams in the AFC. They got a great defense. This defense forces turnovers. Philip, yeah, the Chargers defense is no good. It's Swiss cheese for for that matter. I really like Kansas City to roll to roll out nice and comfortably in Arrowhead. Yeah, I, that's a tough place to play. Uh, first day of the season, opening kickoff, loud is all get out in Kansas City. That place will shake. Not that Philip Rivers can't handle it, but I don't know that he's got the talent around him. Uh, Travis that, Benjamin. That, that's more. That's more the issue. He just doesn't have the. He doesn't have the tools to work with. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. I think that team's in trouble. I think Philip Rivers may have a very, very sad end to a good career, uh, and sad by just not winning a lot of football games in San Diego. So. 
Uh, there's a couple quarterbacks out there that I mean, I've just started looking at the list, and I'd start so many over Philip Rivers that he's an immediate sit him. Sit him. And when they're an immediate sit him, like I said earlier, you cannot bet that team. So, yeah, I like Kansas City all day. Um, I hate laying seven in the NFL. I hate it, so I wouldn't I wouldn't play it. This is another example of you don't have to bet every game, just like on Sunday Swim, pick a couple you like. This will not be my Sunday Swim choice tomorrow. Uh, I will not lay Kansas City in those points, but I, I do think that there's a pretty good chance they're going to beat them by 13. I you can almost – I don't, I don't like to, I don't like the term lock. I think it's a degenerate word. I always say to people when they say this is a lock, I always say, you want to see a lock, go to your front door. That's a lock. That's this, yeah. So, so I don't like that word, but I think this one's really legit, I should say. I, I, like, Kansas, I like Kansas City to roll this one. I really do. Yeah, I like them 26 to 13. I wouldn't put a penny on it, though. I wouldn't put a penny on it. I'm going to roll to another game that really, really interests me, and this one I'm actually putting in my upset category. And, it's you know, it, it's only an upset because the home dog is a dog. If I, I have a feeling that the Jacksonville Jaguars at home, getting five and a half, possibly six in some areas, is going to outright beat the Green Bay Packers. Ooh, ooh, I don't know about that one. I'm not. To, I just. I hate to take against to pick against Aaron Rodgers, especially an unproven team like the Jaguars. I just. I, I don't like that. I don't like to do that. Yeah, Jack, Jacksonville is an unproven commodity. Very, very true. Uh, up and coming, rising, sure by all accounts, by uh, by paper evaluation. We don't know what they're going to look like when they set foot in the field. But dude, I. I did, this is one of the ones that are just so creepy to me. I couldn't lay five and a half or six points with Green Bay, thinking that this is the Jaguars of six years ago with uh, with uh, Blaine Gabbert or with Chad Henney. This is a team that's going to throw the ball around. I do anticipate a long football game with two teams that do like to throw the ball. I'm sure Chris Ivory is going to see plenty of touches. Uh, TJ Yeldon is going to see some touches. They've got a lot of places to mix that ball up there in Jacksonville. I think Green Bay's defense has, has got some question marks and some holes. They've gotten a little bit older and, and – Maybe just not much better in the off season. No doubt, getting Jordy Nelson back certainly does nothing but help if he's a healthy, fast Jordy Nelson. Uh, a healthy, leaner Eddie Lacy should help Green Bay out a lot. But Jacksonville getting five and a half or six, if you can find it someplace at six, I think that's the play of the day for your your upset that you might just really at the end of the day sit back and laugh. I would take Jacksonville, and I may do it on our Sunday swim selection. I may take Jacksonville plus the five and a half. Taking the points is one thing, but I, I can't roll with them outright against against Aaron Rodgers and the Pack. The Packers are coming back this year. He's got his, he's got Jordy Nelson back in the flesh. I just I, I haven't seen anything from the Jaguars that makes me think they're there yet. I think they could be better, but I don't think they're they're going to be. I, don't, I I'm not looking forward. I'm not looking um, for the Jacksonville Jaguars to be world beaters this year, but I think they'll be. I think they'll be improved, but I that doesn't mean I'm going to pick against him against you know against Aaron Rodgers. I just don't do that. It, this is what's let me stress something to you that you already know. We'll just tell for the listeners case out there. This is why you don't really want to bet anything in the first week of the season. You just don't. But when playing Sunday swim, you've got to throw something out there. You got to make a play. But if you're if you're laying wagers, you don't want to do that the first week of the season. I, I think this is a good time to if you're going to do it for fun, do something small and sit back and watch. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't jump into Twitch because we don't know shit right now. You don't know who the Jacksonville Jaguars are. In all first week, the worst is the worst week to bet. It is. I, I really enjoy that five, six, seven, eight sweet spot when people are still but potentially healthy, but and, and you're not all banged up, and you're just still starting to get an idea of what you got. Sometimes that's when Vegas makes a mistake. But uh, I've seen that. Okay, I'm looking at the Jacksonville game now. It's dropped to plus five doesn't necessarily mean that money came in on Jacksonville and moved it. It could be the, the setup. You never know. But I, I just I, something about it creeps me out. I wouldn't touch it on any on any side. However, it's a great fantasy game. It's an over 48 number on it, meaning they would anticipate a lot of points. I don't know what the, the implied score would be on that, but pretty good chance you're looking at seven touchdowns. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I would start anybody from Green Bay, receiver. Uh, quarterback, of course, uh, and I would do the same thing for Jacksonville. So that's a pretty good game to to keep an eye on it for a lot of fantasy implications, and and it's cool. So I got my side, you got your side. You want to hear my other big upset of the day tomorrow? Why not? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, I think Cleveland beats Philadelphia. I like Cleveland on the money line tomorrow. <laughs> ah, with a Philly starting a rookie quarterback. Unsure, and I don't see. You know, Philly's not doesn't look to be on paper very impressive. Yeah, I don't hate it. 
I could, I mean, yeah. I could definitely, I could definitely see it. But here's the other thing: the Browns fucking suck. <laughs> that's, no. that's the one. That's that's <laughs> no, the. Thank you. That's the one. That's the one uh, thing I have to say when it comes. To, I understand it, but you know, you, we think the, I picked the Browns to go three and thirteen this year. They got to win three of them. Why? They, so they have to win three. So maybe get it done early. Maybe the first game of the year, and then they lose ten straight. Who knows? That's yeah. I'm well, done. Look, and you know what? I actually I said that wrong. Look at my notes. I said I like them on the money line. I don't like them on the money line. There's not enough value there. I like them on just the line at three and a half. I. I, I I just this is one of those spooky week one games too, just like the Jacksonville game. You try to look at the other side of how these things pan out. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. Cleveland's gonna win this game out, right? And if they don't, then I have no idea who Philadelphia is. But I think Cleveland wins the game out right in Philadelphia. I would again, I'd never suggest wager on this one, but just because it's week one, but I like Philly to win. That's that's my upset of the week. It's a little goofy, but let's let's make the play and see what happens. I don't yeah. hate it. You got an upset or a loud TV in the background? Yep, yep. I apologize. I apologize to everybody. Had to was doing this show live from uh, live from Palmer Drive's porch, but um, weather has um, forced me to go inside. So you've been moved. Word. Well, yeah. Do you have an upset? I mean, is there somebody out there that? What's jumping out? I mean, the obvious, the obvious money line bullshit. As far as an as far as an upset goes, I, I mean, really, all these spreads are pretty damn close. From yeah, what I, from, from what I see, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, you know what? Miami's going to beat Seattle. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I figured I'd set you up for that one. That, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, well, that's what I'm getting at for just being total BS because you got Seattle laying 10. I've seen it as high as 11. Uh, money line on that is minus 545. For the layman out there, you'd have to lay 545 bucks to win $100 in Seattle to win that game outright. Seattle's winning that game. Are they winning by 10, 11 points? I think so. I think so, too. I think they win that game 28 to 7, 35 to 7, 42 to 7. I don't think that game is close. I don't think that game has a prayer at being close. I do think that uh, our boy out there, Jay Ajay, uh, the Miami Dolphins, Kevin McAllister, his ass by leaving him home alone in Miami yesterday. Uh, I, if he's on your fantasy team, cut him. Hold down the fort, Jay. Yeah, there's, there's nothing to him. Just cut him. Cut his ass. Don't waste a spot on him anymore. Uh, I did see that, uh, that Jimmy Graham is expected to play for Seattle. I don't know what that means for him. He played you know, um, quite a bit last year, just didn't get the looks. It means he can stay the hell off my team. Yeah, that's about that, it. That's it. So the, the only the only couple players that I do like, I think that you do start a Christine Michael. He's going to take the number one nod in Seattle. That's likely going to become a committee job between Michael and Thomas Rawls as long as they both hold on to the football and do what they're supposed to. Um, the wide receivers, I'll tell you who I do like in daily fantasy is I like Tyler Lockett a lot. He's another guy. He's not too cheap, but I think he's coming in around the five thousand point five thousand dollar mark. I like Tyler Lockett quite a bit tomorrow, just because he's a young kid. He's pretty explosive, and they're going to try to get him the ball. They're going to see what he can do. Uh, Seattle wins that game going away. It's not even worth talking about. It's not. It's certainly probably not worth watching either, unless you've got some fantasy players going. Uh, but that game does have my my favorite quarterback start of the week in daily fantasy, and that's Russell Wilson. Um, okay, Russell Wilson. I don't think you can go. I don't think you can go much wrong with him. No, you shouldn't be able to. That's a really nice matchup. Not against game, the, not against playing. the Dolphins. No. Yeah, it's a nice matchup. Uh, I really like to focus on teams that travel and picking against them. Miami going all the way up there. Uh, that's a tough, tough trip. That's corner to corner for Miami. So look for Seattle to beat that ass tomorrow. Uh, and we're just trying to hum along here so we can get a lot of these things all fit into a 45-minute show. Um, I did want to bring up one other category. that I, I picked out a couple games that I see to be potentially disappointing uh, for teams that you may expect to have a showing uh, tomorrow. And unfortunately, my disappointment of the week is the Oakland Raiders. Uh, in the breakdown, I paid quite a bit of attention to this. I, I think that Derek Carr last year had some issues on opening day against Cincinnati where he was just so jazzed up. 
And I know this is something they've addressed of him just calming down and, and, and lessening his approach a little bit. 